Hello everybody. Now we are going to see about a vacuum insulated evaporator. This is how a real vacuum insulated evaporator looks like. You might have observed this beside some hospitals or even behind the hospitals. So let's start with an overview of this VAE. As the, there are three important points which you should know about it. First one is, as the name says, it is a vacuum insulated evaporator. What do you understand? The walls are insulated with vacuum. Fine. So, the one, first point you need to know is, it, the walls are insulated with vacuum and the walls are made of inner stainless steel and an outer carbon steel. So, if this is difficult, you can imagine a cylinder with two layers and the inner one in the in a silver form and the outer one at a, uh, at a uh, in, in about a black color so inner stainless steel and an outer carbon steel the second point is the it is insulated or it has a vacuum wall because it needs to keep the contents at minus 160 degrees celsius that is, it needs to keep the liquid oxygen at minus 150 degrees Celsius. We will be seeing in detail why oxygen is stored in the liquid form and why should it be stored at such low temperature. The third point is, it rests on a weighing tripod for obvious reasons, right? So, because if we need to know the contents, I mean the weight of the oxygen, uh, so that we can calculate how much of oxygen is, being, is remaining. So, for all these reasons, it has been uh, uh, kept on a weighing tripod or it is resting on a weighing tripod. Now, we are going to see the working principle. Liquid oxygen is produced by fractional distillation of air. For uh, understanding purposes, somewhere else, the uh, air is uh, subjected to fractional distillation. We all know that air is composed of oxygen, nitrogen, um, carbon dioxide uh, and some pollutants. So, by fractional distillation, all the constituents are being separated and oxygen is uh, collected, converted into a liquid form somewhere else and delivered to the hospital. The hospitals store that liquid oxygen inside the VIE and the oxygen is being delivered on a demand basis. Now we are going to see why oxygen is kept at minus 160 degrees Celsius. We all know that the critical temperature of oxygen is minus 119 degrees Celsius. So it means that above this temperature, the oxygen must exist as a gas or it can also be said that below this temperature, oxygen will exist in the liquid form. Therefore, the liquid, the oxygen is uh, maintained at a temperature between 160 to 180 degrees Celsius inside the VIE. How is oxygen cooled inside the VIE? The VIE is not actively cooled like our refrigerators. You must be wondering then how it gets, how it maintains oxygen at such a low temperature. It relies on two processes. One is insulation and other one is evaporation. Before we go into further details, we should first know how generally heat is lost and a substance gets cooled. Heat is lost by conduction and convection. First we will see how heat is lost by conduction. Conduction is heat loss by coming in contact with the cooler substance, direct contact with the cooler substance. For example, metals are very good conductors of heat. So, when our substance comes in contact with the metal, then the heat from the substance gets conducted to the metal and therefore the heat is lost. Convection is a, another process by which heat is lost. It is the process by which air adjacent to the substance gets warmed. This warmed air then expands. Upon expansion, it becomes less dense and it rises. Therefore, 
this provides a convection current which takes the heat away from the substance so if you see that warm air rises up thereby the other set of air which comes in contact with the substance is cold now that cold air takes the heat away from the substance and it again expands becomes less dense and rises another set of air comes in contact with the substance and therefore this process repeats itself such that by convection current heat is taken away from the substance now that we have seen about convection and conve and conduction the we need to know that insulation that is provided by the vacuum wall minimizes the heat loss by convection and the conduction into the chamber so if you see in this diagram uh, here the walls are uh, have a vacuum here in between a vacuum this is the vacuum wall so this vacuum wall is responsible for minimizing the heat loss by conduction and convection evaporation is another process by which the liquid oxygen is cooled inside the vie uh, let's see how uh, concentrate well the liquid oxygen becomes gaseous oxygen inside the vie so for a substance to get converted from one state to another that is from a liquid to a gaseous form it requires energy here it, the energy is spent in the form of a heat so the liquid oxygen provides some heat energy so that it be, uh, enters into the gaseous state or it becomes a gaseous oxygen okay so that heat energy is provided by the liquid oxygen which is clear to everybody right now that heat energy which is lost by the liquid oxygen is known as the latent heat of vaporization since heat energy is lost by the liquid oxygen it remains uh, in a cooler form or in a cold temperature for a longer time now we are going to see what happens if oxygen is not used at all so you need to know that the pressure in the vie is approximately 700 kilopascals 100 kilopascal is equal to 1 bar so 700 kilopascal means it is a 7 bar how can we say that it is 700 kilopascal or how do we know that it is 700 kilo the pressure is 700 kilopascals it is because the saturated vapor pressure of oxygen at minus 160 degrees celsius inside the vie is 7 bar for a quick recap we will see what the saturated vapor pressure means in the next slide okay now you now let's concentrate on what happens if uh, the oxygen is not used in a hospital at all for example say all the oxygen taps in the hospital were turned off then the oxygen in the liquid form will evaporate into a gaseous form and slowly the pressure will rise such that it the it can even lead to an explosion to prevent this there is a pressure relief valve which vents all the unused oxygen into the atmosphere see this is the pressure relief valve about which i told you in the previous as said earlier let's see what the saturated vapor pressure is this figure shows the volatile liquid inside this container that is closed to atmosphere that means the container is fully closed and there is no opening in this container molecules of this liquid break away from this surface and enter the space above forming the vapor if the container if this container is kept at constant temperature then what happens a dynamic equilibrium is formed between the liquid and the vapor phases such that the number of molecules in the vapor phase remains constant at that particular temperature now these molecules will not will not be uh, a loop like for example it will start bombarding the walls of the container creating a pressure this is called as the saturated vapor pressure if we apply this to our vie we know that the inside the storage tank 
the li the liquid oxygen and the gaseous oxygen they both are uh, present at the constant temperature of minus 160 degrees celsius so at that the constant temperature a dynamic equilibrium is established between the liquid oxygen and the gaseous such that the number of uh, molecules in the vapor state is constant at that particular temperature so uh, this uh, vapor in the gaseous state will bombard the walls of this liquid oxygen and it will create a pressure uh, in our case it creates a pressure of about 700 kilopascals or 7 bar now let's see what happen if oxygen is used too much if the demand is high then there will be rapid vaporization of large quantities of oxygen why because when the demand is high oxygen in a gaseous form would have been already used up now the liquid oxygen has to undergo vaporization to the gaseous state so as to meet the demand how does the liquid oxygen become uh, enter the gaseous form that process is known as evaporation for oxygen or any substance for that matter to change from the liquid state into a gaseous state it requires energy in this case it requires a heat energy the heat energy is provided by the liquid oxygen so the heat energy which is provided by the liquid oxygen helps the liquid oxygen to become into the gaseous form this is known as the latent heat of vaporization which we all know since heat energy is provided by the liquid oxygen the liquid oxygen becomes more cooler therefore the liquid oxygen temperature has become even more uh, uh, cooler than minus 160 degree celsius now there is not much heat in the liquid oxygen to get converted into the gaseous state therefore vaporization does not happen when vaporization does not happen then oxygen in the gaseous state is also reduced therefore the demand it will not be able to meet the demand especially when the demand is high the liquid oxygen will not be able to meet the demand so in this case what shall we do so from the previous slide we know that the problem is the liquid oxygen becoming more cooler so if there is a, a way to warm the liquid oxygen then our problem can be solved so in this circumstance a valve is opened electronically see here is that valve allowing the liquid oxygen to enter into the evaporator coil this evaporator coil is exposed to the ambient temperature this evaporator coil or this pipe is also known as the superheater although there is no heat that is provided the only heat that is happening is from the ambient temperature Uh, because the liquid oxygen is at about a minus 160 degree celsius while the ambient temperature is at approximately plus 25 to plus 30 degree celsius this uh, very large difference uh, causes uh, rapid warming of liquid oxygen and therefore vaporization we have already seen what happens when the demand is high and when the demand is low let's see what happens in a normal situation in a normal situation we have two issues one is the uh, oxygen is at about minus 160 degree celsius and it is at a pressure of about 700 kilopascals the pipeline pressure the pipeline cannot withstand such high pressure and such low temperature therefore to uh, overcome these two problem before the uh, liquid oxygen entering the hospital pipeline it is made to pass through another superheater this superheater brings the oxygen to ambient temperature and also it is made to pass through a pressure regulator which you can see here this pressure regulator reduces the pressure to about 400 kilopascals and after this it is entered in the hospital pipeline let's see how to measure the content of the vie the amount of oxygen that is remaining in the vie can be calculated from its mass traditionally this is done by weighing it using a tripod weighing scale the vie pivots on two legs and the third resting on the scale the vie's empty weight that is the tar weight is already known and it is subtracted from the measured value 
so as to give the weight of your oxygen at this present in Let's see the advantages of the VAE. Storing liquid oxygen is highly efficient in terms of space because when, when we allow liquid oxygen to vaporize and at the temperature of 20 degrees Celsius, it expands to about 860 times its volume. Then you can imagine how efficient it is in terms of space to store oxygen in the liquid form. The second one is in terms of pressure. Compared to a cylinder, at room temperature, the liquid oxygen is stored at a much lower temperature. That is, the pressure of the cylinder which we use in the uh, operation data is 13,700 kilopascals compared to 700 kilopascals of a uh, VAE. The VAE does not require any power to store oxygen in a liquid state. We already know this, right? Because the VAE only uses insulation and evaporation to maintain the liquid oxygen at uh, such a temperature. Therefore, no power is used. Now, considering all these points, we know that oxygen is therefore cheaper both to deliver and to store as a liquid. The VAE also has some disadvantages. The initial equipment costs are much higher than a cylinder household. Even if we set up a VAE, in case of any interruption to the oxygen supply, that is for safety reasons, we also require a backup cylinder manifold or a second VAE. The third point is, we already know that if the demand is not fairly continuous, then what happens? Due to fear of explosion, the pressure relief valve opens and a significant amount of oxygen will be unused and also into to the atmosphere. Finally, we always have a risk of explosion. Therefore, VAE must be kept outside the building because of the fire risk.